Okay, moving on to VCAs. So you'll see here I have these yellow VCA faders. I'll flip to another view. So you can see down here on the names of the faders, all the yellow are the VCAs. And they correspond to groups of other instruments. So you can see one is for basses, one is for drums, one is for vocals, electric guitars, etc. So what's cool about this is if I want to bump the vocals a little, I can just grab the vocal fader and move it up. If I want to do a stem mix, I can mute all of them and unmute just the things I want in the stem mixes. It's a really great and convenient way to do things in the mix. And you'll see over here, there are some automation moves happening in different parts of the song. And most likely it'll be a dip in a verse, a bump up in a chorus. And in certain instances of some songs, you'll see the downbeat of the chorus getting bumped up to give it a little more emphasis. So there's our VCAs. So now let's take a look at our aux submasters. So at the top, you'll see we have kicks, snares, toms, drum M is for metal, meaning cymbals, overheads, hi-hats, uh, drum ambience, and then we have our claps, percussion. And then after that, we have basses, etc. down the line for every group. Our kicks would be all of the kicks in the session. So for instance, we have kick in, kick out, kick sample one, kick sample two. They all go into that kick aux master. Same thing with the snare. Same thing with the toms down the line. In the case of ambient samples, where we have uh, a stereo kick ambience or room, stereo snare rooms, they would go to the ambient channel. Each of them have their own specific signal path. And if you'll notice, most of these are pretty close to zero. I might have boosted them at one point. But if I start my session with those at zero, then I can get my gain structure right. And then the channels as they come in, I can just move them where I see fit. Or if you get a, a session from a client that has been really working hard on their balances, why start over if they like them? Just send them here, leave their balances and route them appropriately. Easy. So let's take a look at what we have on each of them. So on the kicks, you'll see there's some things here that are inactive. So the, the inactive things, to me, save me from scrolling through my long list of plugins to find stuff and lets me just activate whatever I need. So in this rack here behind me, I have all my Tone Lux and API EQs that I use for mixing. So the first one is dedicated to kick, second to snare, three and four to, to the drum rooms, and five and six to toms. Then I also have a pair of 1176s and Pultex. One 1176 is usually dedicated to a kick and one Pultec goes with that, and one is for the snare and the one Pultec goes for that. This saves me from changing anything if I have to do recalls. If it works, I run it through it. If it doesn't, I do not. So you can see here, the snare went through the 1176, but the kick didn't. So moving down, we have two aux submasters for bass. So why do we need two aux submasters for bass? It's pretty simple. Sometimes you want the bass to be louder, but you don't want more high end or more low end. So I split it up. So the first one has the general bass tone and most of the low end, and the second is pretty thinned out and has all of the highs. So if you'll notice on the high one, you'll see it's all dipped out down here. And on the first one, none of that is dipped out and I'm using this great Elysia EQ to boost the low end. And I also have the Manly ELOP outboard compressor on this. So the combination of those can be really helpful, and you'll notice in different parts of the song, I've automated them to be more effective. And the next batch is these guitars. So on these guitar subs, you'll notice I have a insert, which is my API 550s, followed by the SPL Vitalizer, which I'm using for the stereo expander. And then for this tremolo guitar, the LA3A, and then this API Vision channel strip. And then the pedal steel sounded really good the way it was, so I put the LA3A just to sort of even everything out. And I usually don't put reverb directly on an aux master I will send to it, but in these guitars, in this case, I use this concert hall setting on this great Valhalla Vintage Verb for the steel. And on the trem guitar, 
I wanted to simulate, you know, a really good spring reverb, so we used the AKG spring reverb plugin. Then acoustic guitars. Billy Decker acoustic, which is uh, nice. And sometimes, you know, the acoustic guitar has to almost be a percussive element in the track with some harmonic content, so that helped me with that. Then this is a great plugin. This is a nice way if you can add some high end with this air band, but you can also pick some compression and it's really picking a harsh band and compressing it. Then after the acoustic guitars, I have keyboards, which were samples and they were sounded pretty good. And uh, on the auxes, I didn't do much. I probably did this after I dealt with the individual channels to put them in a better spot in context in the mix. Then moving on to the two lead vocal tracks. This is an awesome plugin, Soothe by Oak Sound. It's a multi-band, real-time analyzing compressor that will find harsh frequencies in a vocal and remove them. Phoenix tape emulator. I use that on vocals all the time. It really does something. It sounds great, and it, you know, it gives it a nice round warmth without making it sound dull. Pro Q, Fab Filter EQ, which is awesome taking out all the low and unnecessary rumbles that may be there and maybe a couple more little spots that are harsh. Then I have this Blue Stripe 1176, which is really fantastic for vocals. It has a great, great sound for that. And then I have a de of course, because we're probably boosting a fair amount of high end. And here's where more high end's coming. This uh, Seaman EQ copy emulation by Sound Toys, which is great. They make great stuff. Then on the next vocal channel, I have all the same plugins, and they were adjusted differently because one's a male vocal and one's a female vocal. And then down here on the background vocals, it's pretty much the same except I went to my go-to plugin alliance SSL EQ. So there's all the AUX submasters.